Week 8 Spiritual Rants, Jerry Rothhauser. And don't forget, we're trying to work through the Bible in a year. And I've got longer podcasts on Libsyn, iTunes, YouTube, Google Play. You could probably find it under your bed at night. It's everywhere. It's ubiquitous. There's your word for the week. Well, here's a couple more words for you for this week. And actually, it's just one word repeated twice. Goody, goody. You ever heard that expression, goody, goody? Has anyone called you goody, goody? Did you slap them when they said that? Or did you say thank you? Oh, by the way, don't forget my blog, spiritualrants.com. Did someone ever call you a goody-goody because you're reading through the Bible in a year and you're on week eight and you're reading Leviticus 7 through 18, Mark 3 through Mark 8, Psalm 37 through Psalm 41, and Proverbs 10, 5? through verse 16. Did, did they ever call you that? Because you're reading through the, the Bible in, in, in a year? Now, when I taught college, not that long ago, I made this statement in class that it's not good to be a goody-goody. And they thought I was crazy. I think I've told this story before. They just thought I was nuts. And then I had to explain it. You know, uh, being a Christian is not about being moral, primarily. Now, don't misquote me. Primarily, it's not. It's about a relationship, relationship with Christ. The theme of the Bible, as I've said over and over again, rebellion against God leads to death. You see that theme from Genesis to Revelation. And a relationship with God leads to life. So you're reading in Leviticus, and you're saying to yourself, why am I reading this? And you should say that to yourself, actually, although there's some really interesting things in there. And they are all illustrations that will help you in the New Testament. That's what Galatians 3.24 says. So we've talked about something called dispensationalism based on a word in the King James. So you probably won't find it in your NIV or your NASB, your ESV, and whatever alphabet you're reading is not going to be in there. It'll be in the King James. And what it means is that God has a different relationship with mankind over different eras. And always keep this in mind because people get this confused. It's always by faith in God. Now, during the law, you had faith with God or you weren't saved. I mean, if you did it by rote, you were sacrificing animals and whatever else you were doing, according to the law, if you weren't doing it and having faith in God through that system, you weren't saved because you're only saved by faith. Now we're in the church age, and you're reading Mark, is the Gospels, so that's actually still Old testament E. It's not until the day of Pentecost in Acts 2 that the church was formed and originated and baptized. <laughs> Literally, people were baptized in the Spirit, 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen, and the church began. Before that, there was no church. And we might also cause, call this the uh, era of grace 
or the era of the Holy Spirit. Because in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was active, but it came on people, prophets, kings, whatever. It did not indwelt people. And we looked at that already. We saw that in Romans 8. I think it's believe, believe it's uh, verse 9. 1 Corinthians six nineteen. And the Holy Spirit will not leave you if you've trusted Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works. It says in Ephesians 2, 9, so that no one may boast. And yet, and yet, unfortunately, a lot of people, they... They trust Christ, they're saved, and they think, oh, well, we need to go to church. And they do. The problem is that most churches don't teach about the Holy Spirit. And we're in the era of the Holy Spirit, and they're not teaching the four commands about the Holy Spirit. And if you want commands... It's not the Ten Commandments that we should be primarily concerning ourselves with. It should be the four commands regarding the Holy Spirit. Now, that's true. Obey the Ten Commandments, except for church on Saturday. That wouldn't make any sense. We have church on Sunday. And those nine, except for that one, is repeated in the New Testament. I just found out. I just found out. I didn't know this. Even Jewish people today go to Sunday school oftentimes. That, you could have knocked me over with a feather. Okay, I wasn't that shocked. But I was somewhat shocked. I did not know that. But a lot of them do, and they go to Sunday school on Sunday. Anyway, four commands regarding the Holy Spirit. We've talked about it. We'll we'll get back to it, I'm sure, again. Galatians 5, 16, walking in the Spirit. Also, Galatians 5, 18 is being led by the Spirit, but basically walking in the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18 being filled with the Spirit, don't grieve the Holy Spirit, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Have you heard those before? You may have heard them in passing, but has your pastor really majored on that? Because those are really important for the church age. That's the age in which we live, by spirit, by faith and obeying those commands about the Holy Spirit. Now, doesn't mean you can commit adultery or murder people, anything like that. No. Or disrespect your parents. No. The first thing, the primarily th- primary thing, is to have a relationship with the Lord. Let me give you an example. Several. If you were going to pick, out of the Old Testament, the big heroes, the biggest heroes, because you might have uh, Solomon, you might have Samson. In fact, there's a movie out now about Samson. I may go tonight. I don't know. Maybe I'll go. They're not the biggies. Here's the biggie. The biggies. Moses. Ever heard of Moses? He's a biggie, right? David. Abraham, let me tell you about these guys. Wouldn't you say? You might throw in Daniel to that. You might. But let me tell you about these other three. Moses, he was a murderer. Remember? He killed Egyptian. Remember that? He was a murderer. David, he was an adulterer. He should have been stoned. I mean, you know. Not like in Colorado, like with real stones. He should have been stoned. And he, and he wasn't. He continued on. And so how did he get out of his per- predicament? He murdered the husband 
of the woman he committed adultery with. He was a murderer and an adulterer. Amazing, huh? How about Abraham? You think Abraham was one of the heroes of the Old Testament, right? Okay, the same chapter wherein he was given that great promise that a gigantic nation would grow from him. Later in that chapter, he gave over his wife to the Pharaoh to save his life. That's what he did. That was in Genesis 12. So what happened later in his life? Did he learn his lesson? Because God protected his wife and returned her to Abraham. You'd think he'd learn his lesson, right? No, he did it again later in his life. He is a woman abuser. I mean, how else do you get around that, right? If you give your wife over to another man to save your life. All right, those are the biggies in the Old Testament. They had the Holy Spirit come on them. They did not have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of them. That doesn't mean Christians that trust Christ don't commit those kinds of sins, because they do. Now, here's an interesting quote a friend of mine gave me. We got together for breakfast the other day from William Henry Griffith Thomas. I wonder, you know, how did he remember all his names? I guess, you know, because he lived to be a little bit older. He was going to be one of the founders of Dallas Seminary, and he died on his trip over here from England to America. I think that's when it happened, but he died before he was able to become a professor there. Here's what he said. Satan's business is not to make good people bad and bad people worse. Satan's business is to make bad people good and good people better without Christ. That's pretty interesting. And it's true. Satan takes bad people and makes them good, makes them horrific, or not horrific. Well, yeah, actually that, but heroic and horrific, and good people better, but without Christ. And so a lot of people have respect with people who become billionaires, give their money away, and all, all kinds of good things that people do. Here's the problem. Romans 3.23 says all have fallen short of the glory of God. Everyone sins. And guess what? The day after you trusted Christ and the day before you trusted Christ, you're still a sinner. You still have a bad nature. You're still going to do bad things. You're still going to sin. And so... If people just try to become better, they're going to be a goody-goody. And what we're going to talk about next week, what we're going to get to, is carnality. Another King James word, but that's okay. I'll explain it. There's three kinds of people in the world. We're going to talk about that next time. One of them is carnal. A carnal Christian is someone, I said I'm going to do it next week, now I'm, you know, I'm telling you now. If you try to live the Christian life on your own and try to be a good person and try to fulfill the Ten Commandments, you may be somewhat successful, but guess what? You're not what God wants you to be. You'll be a goody-goody, and you may appear to other people, to be, like, pretty slick, pretty good, a good Christian, possibly, but not in God's eyes. In God's eyes, there's, like, good and good. There's, like, carnal good. You try to prove your worth to God. We talked about last week. We talked about religion and being religious. Religion 
is a person who tries to prove their worth to God. But a true Christian is someone who is in Christ. That's a technical phrase that Paul uses 86 times in his letters. 86 times he uses the phrase in Christ. And what he means is sinners who have trusted Christ and they're in Christ. Then Colossians 2, 6 kicks in. As you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, having been rooted and now being built up in him, established in your faith, etc. So how do you live? The same way you trusted Christ. We'll go on with that next week. This is Spiritual Rant. And of course, tell your friends and write up a review. Maybe on iTunes would be good. And I hope you'll be downloading next week.